looky here, we got the Raging Droner and we're gonna build it right now. Hi, I'm Joel Lightcatcher and I've got here the five inch Raging Droner by Catalyst Machine Works. This is the brand new model and a big shout out to Neil for sending this to me with all the accessories to do a great review for you. So let's see what we got here. Well, we got, of course, the package itself. And uh, look, we've got a little guy here from Big Trouble Little China. Yeah, many mysteries. And over here we got Spock saying how logical it is. I fail to understand why I should care to induce my mother to purchase falsified patents. And it's circled, this is the five inch. Apparently it's coming out with a four and a six inch, but for right now this is the standard five inch. We also have the cool canopy, and this has the shark fin. And then we have for the GoPro mount, this mounting assembly here with the session mount, because I'm still in the session land, and I think this is a 30 degree standoff angle bracket for it. We, oh, and this is also, I think it's a mounting for the GoPro, I'm not quite sure what this is. We got an additional bag of parts, and for those who like to bash as I do, this is an additional a rear brace for extra support. So we pretty much have everything but the six inch hybrid arms. So let's get together and open this up and see what we have in this package. Oh, <laughs> there's one more thing that Neil sent me and I think this is the coolest. I'm wearing it right now. Let me see if I can turn around, take it off to show you this bracelet. And it says, and the bracelet says, I'm an effing drone pilot. Catalyst Machine Works. I love this thing and I'm gonna be wearing this a lot. So, thank you, Neil. I don't know which I like better, the drone or the bracelet. All right, let's get to this. Joel Lightcatcher here and I have my Raging Droner, which I have built, but this is a build video. So I need to show you how to build a Raging Droner. So let's get back to the beginning and do a full flashback right now. There you have it. Our Raging Droner is now disassembled, front arms, rear arms, rear bulkhead, antenna tubes, rear arm mounts, bottom plate, side cage plates, front brace, front cage brace, rear cage brace. That's the whole thing. Now let's put it together using my build notes. I got nine steps here on how to build it well illustrated with pictures. It accompanies Neil's video and I've done a few things a little differently. So if you want to do this and make your life easier, this is free for my Patreon subscribers. So if you go to my Patreon account, subscribe for a buck and um, this will be yours and that's my gift to you. So let's get started. So we're going to start with step one of my build notes, which is the sub assembly. We're going to put our rear assembly together. And to do that, we're going to take this 3D printed bulkhead, take this part with the antennas out, and here's our rear plate. We're gonna put it with the small end facing the antenna tubes. We have these four holes that line up to these holes. Just get that in there. I'll just kind of like finger tighten these a little to start. And you wanna be a little careful with this because you don't wanna over tighten them. And I'm gonna cheat a little, got a little my electric screwdriver to start these. And I'm just, I'm gonna finish it with a regular screwdriver. Cause again, I don't wanna over tighten it. But I do like to save a little time. 
don't know, let's see. A regular screwdriver is good. Just do it till I feel a little resistance. Just like that. Just a little resistance. Not too much, because we don't want to strip it, because that would be bad. Okay, to finish this step, we are going to put the antenna tubes in, but we need some zip ties. Now, this, the kit did not include the zip ties, so I luckily have a few. So you're gonna need two small zip ties. And we're just gonna put the antenna tubes in. And we can cut these to length. I'm not gonna cut them right now, because it'll depend on what the size of my uh, antennas are that I put in there. So we put those in and we take these zip ties and we're just gonna wrap it around here. And this is supposed to keep the antenna tubes from falling out. I often just put in a little glue, but this is Neil's idea. So I'm gonna go with it. And put one there. And let's see, I wanted to match up the same way. I'm going to put one there. And just tighten that down tight. I like to take uh, some, you know, those pliers and just pull it out to make it as tight as I can. Get a little snug. See, yep, that's not going anywhere. Another little twist. Okay, that's good. And let's get a little snips and cut off the extra. One, two. All right. Now, now we're fully done with step one of the rear assembly. You notice how that, again, just notice the little end is coming out to the antenna tubes. All right. Step one is done. Okay, we're up to step two, where we are going to work on the rear sub assembly. So we gotta start with our bottom plate. And in our bottom plate, there's two sides of this. You'll notice we have the narrow and the wide. This is the front and this is the rear. With the press nuts, this is the bottom of the bottom plate. So make that face down. And you'll notice if you take this sub assembly, it fits these holes just fine. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to sandwich the plate, the arm, the spacer, and the bottom plate in that order. And we're also going to need these four arms. Did I say arms? Four bolts. So I like to start with the closed end on the inside. So that would be the outer hole here. And you may have some tight tolerances where you need to start threading this a little by hand. Take the arm. Thread that in. If it's, and I've threaded this a few times so it's a little loose already. And then the spacer. Now this is different than how Neil does this because he likes to do the open arc. But I like to do the closed. And we're just then going to just thread that in there, like so. And then we're gonna come back to this side and do the same. Now, there, you'll see in a moment why I like to do the closed side first, but I'm going to get this started so you can see. So I've got that threaded, so I can see a little bit peeking out like a turtle head. Okay, and there's the spacer with the closed hole. In there, okay. Ah. Did not mean to do that. Get that moving. I know it looks a little weird right now. Okay. Swing that arm around. So this is why I like the close hole. Everything swings. Just put it in position and run the screw screw down through the captain nut on the bottom. Now, because I've got these swinging, I can more easily, and here's the tip. If you take your, 
If you take your smallest hex driver, you can put that in there and actually center up the holes like that. Give it a little hold, and then take your bolt and makes it go straight down in there. And that's my little trick. And that's why I like to use the closed end first because that makes the open end easier. Again, I'm gonna take my little tool here and I'm just gonna put it through all the holes to help line them up. You see how it goes in there. Okay, perfect, now that I got it. Makes putting the screw in so easy. Did I say screw? I mean bolt. Bolts are different than screws. Bolts have flat ends and screws have pointy ends. So I'm very particular about that. Okay. And we give that a little snug because we're not going to have to do anything more with this. So at this point, we have our rear assembly all set up. And I do want to stress again, these captain nuts go on the bottom. You see all the silver is facing the bottom. And there we go. At that, we're going to move on to step three, which is the front arms. So we're going to set that aside right now. And we're going to need side plate, side cage plate, the front brace, and the front rear brace. Now here's the thing, I had some problems when I first did this because the, the nubs here couldn't quite bottom out in the slots here. And it was only on one side, so I had to take a flat file and open these up a little bit. Not so much on the back, but in my case, the front didn't line up. So I wanna stress what you need to see to know that you got this right, because if you don't get it right, the cross brace here will not line up with the motor. So it's very important that you get these pieces bottomed out. So also we have to have that captive nut has to be on the outside, and that's important as well. So if you have this right, you're going to Slide that in and give it a push. See the click? And you need that flush across the top. Very, very important. If you don't have a flush across the top, get out your file and give it just a few light strokes until you get that flush. And get that. And okay. See, I got that easy because I worked it. I still got to give it a little effort because. I want to make this very clear. You want to make sure that that is flush right across the top. If it's not flush, you need to file it down. Very, very important or it will not line up. Same goes true for this. If, it, if the back brace doesn't bottom out properly, you will have alignment problems. So get that in and sure that that is also bottomed out and by this you know pay attention to back here you want to make sure you have the same amount of space same amount of open space there and there look at it visually make sure it's level and if you got that level you know you've got that seated all the way in and that's how it should look just like that so with that we have the front brace assembly done and again Captive nut on the outside, super important. Now I've already done this on the bottom, but what you need to do is also take, and I like to use um, not this flat file. I've got a number of files here. I like to use this uh, rounded bottom file and you want to round out this bottom plate right here and here, right on these inside edges only. And the reason is because there's a sharp edge, fairly sharp edge. And if this Velcro strap is rubbing across that to hold the battery on, it will eventually cut this. So you want to round that and make it soft. So that is an important step to round that off. And that's my step four. All right, so now we're gonna put the front arms on. And for that, I, th there's two bolts here for the front arms. And this is important. And I just want to review this quickly here because this is an important distinction. 
we have two shorter bolts and two longer bolts. Two bolts are 10 millimeter. See? 10 millimeter. And two bolts are 12 millimeter. And that's because we have to go through this brace for one screw, but not the other. So we're going to take the shorter screws and use them in the open holes to mount the arms. And you can uh, make this a little easier by just starting these a little. And when we get to the next step, it'll be apparent why we don't use the other hole. So we'll take that and just lightly tighten it down. Don't cinch it down tight. Just kind of hold it in place. Just like that. We're up to step six, and that is the joining of the sub-assemblies. So to do this, we're going to take our two pieces and slide this like this. The arms go on top and just slide them so the hole back here aligns. And you'll notice now these holes are going to line up with the arms. And again, the arms are on top of the bottom brace. Now that we have that, we are going to grab my tweezers and we're going to take this. This is a 27 millimeter bolt and a washer, and it's a large silver washer. This is going to go through the rear bulkhead. I'm going to use my electric screwdriver here and into the captive nut. Make sure you've got that, hold that flat. There we go. And make sure that that is just tight enough. Not too tight. That's a little too tight. There we go. It should just bend in just slightly, just like that. And that's Now that we have that, we're going to take these two longer screws. Remember, these are the 12 millimeter screws. And we're going to pass them through the arms now into the bottom. And now we can tighten up these two. Starting to look like a raging droner now, don't it? In right there. And by the way, I'm going to show you something I'd like you to notice. Remember how I mentioned we got a, a 12 millimeter and a 10 millimeter here. And you know you got it right because they both bottom out the same. If you had them backwards, one would be sticking out like a turtle head. All right. So now that we've got that, we are now ready for the next step. We're up to step seven, I believe. Yep, step seven. And in step seven, we're going to be adding the longer black bolt. Well, we just did step seven. How about that? Got ahead of myself. All right. So now we're up to step eight. And step eight, well, we want to put these together. Now, for these, you need two motors because the motors are part of the frame. So I've got my two motors here. And we need to get some bolts for that. So we need some 12 millimeter black bolts. It's good to have a millimeter gauge to make sure you got the right ones here. Let's go find 12. And this is not 12. There's a 12. And there's another 12. All right, so now, and we, oh, we need four of them. So let's find two more. 12 and, nope, 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 nope. Here we go. That should be 12. Yeah, we got our 12s. So we have our four 12s. And you might want to use a little um, 
Loctite on this. I always get a little Loctite when I do this. And a piece of scrap paper. So what I like to do here is get a little Loctite out there. That's a piece of scrap paper. Get a little there for the bolt. And you'll notice right here how these line up. And they, if they line up perfectly, the holes go right through. It means you got these bottomed out just right. So I'm going to put that bolt right through there and orient my motor so the wires are going the right way. There we go. That would be right. Put that down. Take another one. The Loctite. There we go. And cinch that down. Now we will be using two other um, screws, but this again, this is part of the frame design where the motor is actually holding the um, braces on. So do the first one, not too tight. Second hole. Down. And now the front brace is on secure. And there we are. The motors are all attached and the front brace is secure. That is our step eight. All right, we're in the last steps. This is step nine. And what we're doing here is we are going to take this knurled black standoff. We got to pick up the soft piece right here and slide it in there. Get a little push into both of these holes. It's got to go all the way through. Okay, and once we got that in, just sure it's in level and push that down and at that point we're going to take two eight millimeter bolts and you can see they're eight millimeters because I measured it right there and just put it right in there just like that and that pretty much holds down the whole rear. And of course we have another place right here. So we have another standoff that we're gonna put in over here. Just line that up. I'm gonna pinch it just to hold it in place. I got two more of these eight millimeter bolts. Let's go get that found there. Put that in. So this is the easy part. Get that hole located. And in she goes. Okay, and there you have it. That is the basic construction of the Raging Droner. Of course, now we're ready to uh, put our electronics in. We have some standoffs that I have not installed because I'm going to be doing it a little differently. Uh, I'm not using a conventional beta flight on this. I'm going to build this as a race flight one and that requires a different type of standoff. So I'm going to get to that in another video. You're going to find you're going to have a lot of additional parts that you're not using yet. And that's because we have all these accessories. For example, I got the racing crown canopy, racing canopy, and to, you, to attach this, I need to take these standoffs out, and then this has a screw that will go right in here, and this would swing down into place, as you can see. You can imagine that hole goes in there and there. And this compartment here, that's for a receiver or whatever you may want to put in there. 
Now I am going to be building this for a GoPro and for the GoPro it has a different canopy that still connects here through these holes and again I'm going to have to remove this standoff to put this in place and then my case I like the old session mounts and we have these two pieces that uh, I'll have to get into how this works I believe one end goes here and the other end attaches to this and this and I'm going to get to that in another video of how to put these on so where we, there we are there is one more thing one more thing I want to do where is that additional piece okay I'm a bit of a basher and I guess Neil kind of seen my videos he knows I play really rough on my quads so I'm going to make my quad stronger and stiffer with the addition of this rear brace and the rear brace this is an option and it includes these four screws right here now to put these on I'm going to need again my motors so let's go get two more motors I'm going to grab two more of my motors and by the way uh, the only reason I'm using these lumineers other than they're nice motors these are uh, 2206, 2450s, is uh, Lumineer had one of their amazing five for five sales, and I got these motors for an insane price. So that's why I'm using these motors. That and I wanted to try the Popos. These are um, last year's model, but you know what? They still work great. Again, I'm gonna need my Loctite again. Let me get my scrap paper. So if I've done everything right, the holes should just line up just like that. And of course, the motors will hold them on. So let's go and um, put a little more Loctite on my scrap paper here and uh, put them on. Again, this is an optional piece. Um, if you want it stronger, sure, I'm sure it adds a little bit of um, weight. But um, I intend to use this as a freestyle quad, not a racer. And as such, I don't mind a little bit more weight. Um, and uh, stiffness. Okay, there we go. Oh. No, that's in the wrong position. Look at that. I gotta fix that. That's not right. Make sure those wires are in the right place. Or, or it just won't work. Get those holes right. And I'm making a little bit of a mess with this. Lock tight. Let's wipe that off. Oh, this is it. There we go. So it's nice that the Neil was catalyst, and Neil was good enough to give us all the right length bolts that we need. Off the extra. One more, and we're done. And you see how the motors become an integral part of the frame design. There we go, and the motors are in the right place. And the frame is now really super strong. 
I mean, this is going to take a terrible beating, my terrible beating, and I think this is just going to be phenomenal with the uh, Hot Rod Red. All right, so I'm going to make another video putting on some of these accessories, and you'll see that. And again, we're going to have a Race Flight 1 build of how to put on the Bolt 32 ESC and the Revolt OSD um, Flight 1 flight controller. And that's going to be a whole other series. Anyway, so um, that's the build video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you um, get my build notes for my Patreon subscribers. And um, I'll do a quick little review video of this next. So I'm Joel Lightcatcher. Thanks for joining me. If you felt this was of value, please subscribe. Please tell your friends. Help me expand my channel and uh, get YouTube to uh, help spread the word that we have some great content here on building and flying quadcopters. I'm Joel Lightcatcher, and I'll see you next time in the air. Bye-bye.